Okay, let's begin lecture. Sorry for the delay. Uh, we are uh, trying to avoid the problem that we had last uh, Thursday where everything froze up at, towards the end of class. Uh, we're going to review the skateboarders examples that I asked you to eyeball. Uh, it's actually the beginning of chapter four. Uh, there's a couple things that uh, we're going to uh, skip over for now in chapter three. And uh, we're taking a, a sneak peek into chapter four with the skateboard example. But it's actually chapter three concepts. And then we're going to do some uh, sketching together. And I have graph paper set in my PowerPoint, my keynote file. And then at the end of class, I'll give you a little rundown on how to get ready for exam one. And uh, here's uh, our SI schedule, our quote for the day. Uh, we'll be having, uh, for the month of February, we'll be having Martin Luther King Jr. Um, All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. I think that applies to just about everybody. Anyway, uh, SI, uh, regular schedule this week. And uh, normally uh, we have a, a, on top of the regular schedule, we have an SI review. But this, this exam only, uh, we do not. They were not able to get uh, a room scheduled for the SI review. But uh, you'll have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then Thursday, uh, I guess you'll have SI, and you can go over the test if you like, uh, or you know, get mental counseling from Shy <laughs> on <laughs> if you're if you're suffering grievous mental trauma after the test. But I, you know, I, every every just so you know, I write new tests every time. And so I always gauge my test or I design my test according to the things that I've spoken about in lecture and how much we've covered in lecture. So in other words, if I gave you um, a verbatim copy of exam one from last semester or from five semesters ago, um, you, you know, it wouldn't be righteous. Uh, so I always do that and I try to do it on Wednesdays, give you the exam on Thursday. Um, Office hours with me tomorrow uh, for us, 10.30 a.m. to noon, uh, physical sciences building as always. We have been talking about Newton's three laws of motion. Here's the basic strategy. It's a kind of a philosophical statement or a statement of objectives. And that is... If you're given the initial conditions of some object or some mechanism, you know, like a machine even, or some kind of dynamical system of any size, the question is, how does the dynamical state evolve over time? That's what you're trying to find. Because if you can do that, you can accomplish um, a prediction of a future state for that object for that machine for that system you know like a weather system weather systems are are theoretically impossible to predict I mean we can make historical predictions uh, but they don't really have the force of physical law and there's various reasons for that for weather systems but I mean large systems galaxies and stuff you always want to figure out the um, equation of motion or the time evolution equation, which in this case is F equals MA. For the most of the stuff that we've been working with, that's F equals MA. And another way of um, kind of stating this same thing is to say um, of the object, as perhaps Sir Isaac Newton would have said it, uh, where shall it go, and uh, when shall it get there? And that's in a single English sentence. That's pretty much the bare bones, the skeleton 
of why and how we use Sir Isaac Newton's three laws uh, of motion. And so uh, as you copy these things down, here's Sir Isaac Newton saying those, I put those words into his mouth. I don't think he ever said that. But, but he was living in the, in the days of forsooth. So I guess he might have said that sometime. But what we're going to try to do now is, um, you know, with this objective in mind, we're going to try to get something that's going to bring it all together. Right? And because if you can do that, you will form um, a good mental state for yourself. You'll be learning. So we're going to try to bring it all together. Here we go. And what we're going to do uh, to bring it all together is to go back to that example of the two skateboarders. And this is uh, a picture of page 45 over here. Um, and page 45 makes mention of momentum. Whoa. Dude, my microphone just broke. This is probably like $500 of microphone here. Maybe that's just the battery pack. Um, do you want to see if you can handle that? Put that back together. Give me 20 bucks. Okay, this one's working. Okay. Okay, uh, so, yeah, so page 45, and there's a mention on page 45 of the concept of momentum and impulse. We're not going to go over, we're not going to have that on exam one, but the part of that example that mentions forces, accelerations, and so on, yes, we will have that on exam two, of course. And let's take a look at it right now. This is the leftovers from last Thursday. And hopefully uh, this, is, this is where the computer screen popped out on us. Hopefully it'll, it'll work nicely now. Okay, let's take, talk about two skateboarders, uh, Carl and Bob. Here are their specs. Um, Carl is smaller. Uh, like a, I don't know, like a, maybe a sixth grader or something. Initial speed is zero. Initial velocity is zero. He's not moving. He's at rest. And so this is like two skateboarders uh, pushing off from each other. That's what we're talking about. If you did your reading, you'll realize that. Bob is, a, is twice the size, twice the mass. So he's like a high schooler. Okay. 80 kilograms. And he also is at rest. Now that's there. Um, initial state. The interaction that I describe in the textbook, page 45 and so forth, uh, is a simple one. I'm using a very uh, easy to round number, uh, 500 newtons for their interaction force. So their push force on each other is 500 newtons. Now that may seem like a lot. Whoa, 500 newtons. But that's like 50 kilograms. That's like 100 pounds. So if you can, now if you do any weightlifting, you know that putting uh, 135 pounds over your head, 245s in a, in a bar is not easy if you're doing military, especially if you're doing it from the floor. So this is a, a decent amount of force, but not, it's not like they're squatting 400 or something like that. Okay, uh, so the force on Bob excuse me, the force from Bob on Carl is 500 newtons. The force from Carl on Bob is minus 500 newtons, and those um, plus and minus signs, implied plus sign, for the force of Bob on Carl, uh, those encode the directions. Bob is pushing to the right, Carl is pushing 
to the left. Their interaction time is 0 0.48 seconds. And please organize your notes in the same way that I'm doing because you're going to have some clicker questions in just a few minutes that relate to this listing uh, that we're working on right now. And this is from your textbook as well, your e-text. It's, it's just stacked up a little bit. Looks a little differently. It's all stacked in one column. Here we got to use two columns. Their accelerations. Uh, Carl has an acceleration of 12.5 meters per second squared. That's 500 newtons of interaction force that he gets from Bob uh, divided by his 40 kilogram mass. Uh, Bob gets the same size force directed to the left, uh, but he's heavier. He's 80 kilograms of mass. So his acceleration is negative 6.25 meters per second squared. All right now that's item number four. So we're just kind of trotting through some of the things that are physical facts. Some of them are given information, uh, like Carl and Bob, their specs here, the interaction force here, uh, but then these are calculations over here for acceleration. Delta V. Delta V is also uh, a calculation. Once we have the acceleration and we know delta T, the interaction time, uh, we can figure out uh, how much their speed changes. Now they both start at rest. So delta V, whatever it happens to be, is going to also be their final speed, V subscript F. And we'll get to that in a minute. But anyways, here's Carl. Uh, a delta T for him is 12.5 meters per second squared times 0 0.48 seconds. Ding! 6.0 meters per second. So that's how much speed he has acquired during that moment when they're pushing off of each other. Now it's only a fraction of a second. It's not even half a second. It's pretty quick. 0 0.48 seconds. But in that amount of time, he gets 6 meters per second. Now, I'm going to make a call. The call of honor. I see a bunch of skateboards in the back of the room. And are there two individuals that would like to reenact the Carl and Bob uh, experiment here? Raise your hands if you would like to volunteer down in the front here. One. You did it last time. I need one more. Come on. Okay, good. Bring your skateboards down here to the front. Good. Go get yours, man. And for authenticity, I would like you to ride them all the way down the aisle, one after the other. Well, just to verify... And what is your name again? Sam. Sam. And your name? Sava. Sava, right. Okay. Okay, fellas, why don't you come up here right in front, okay? And Sam uh, and Sava, Sava's wearing the sweatshirt. Okay, mount up on your skateboards facing each other. Okay, toe-to-toe. Okay, right up next to each other. Now, I want you to push off. Hold on. <laughs> Don't push off yet. Well, I'm going to ask you to push off, you know, palm to palm, like you're playing patty cake. Patty cake. Okay, uh, but when I count to three. Okay. All right. You guys ready? And who's bigger here? Sava's bigger. Good. Okay. So let's see if he has a little bit less velocity than Sam. Okay. Now, he's not a whole lot bigger, but we might it, he's bigger th enough that we might notice a difference in the velocity states. It's kind of hard to tell because they have different skateboards and stuff. But, okay, get as close as you can, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Okay, okay, brace up. Okay, go ahead and touch. 
<laughs> okay, on three. One, two, three. Ooh, Sam did. Sam went farther, didn't he? Okay, go change directions. Try it again. Let's just to verify if it's a left to right thing or not. Okay, face each other. Okay, Brittany, now uh, you're pretty close to the. Okay, Sam, can you back? Brittany, raise your hand. Okay, back up so that she's. Okay, now you move forward so that she's right between the two of you. Okay, and I'll get over here. Okay, and I'll verify. And everybody on actually in this row can verify, you know, if they're faster and if they're farther. Okay. Contact. One, two, three. Whoa. Sam Def. What do you think, Brittany? Yep. Everybody on this this column here? Yeah. All right. Sam went further. He had he started with more uh, speed and friction eventually slowed him down. But good work, Sava. Good work, Sam. Everybody give him a a hand. Thank you for doing that, fellas. Uh, so now we're let's get back to working with Carl and Bob. Similar thing for for uh, Bob. Bob is a little bit larger now. He's Sava's okay. Good. I see these guys are in the back. They're going high fives and everything. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, now, Sava's not twice as heavy as Sam, all right? But we still noticed it. Sam was smaller, small enough uh, that we noticed a different dynamical state. Same thing here with Bob. He's going backward, but only at three meters per second, according to our calculations. Because delta V for Bob is his acceleration, negative 6.25 meters per second squared, which we calculated in item four, and then times the interaction time. That's the time that he was accelerating. You know, Bob and, uh, just listen to me, Bob and Carl, Sam and Sava, they were in contact for a fraction of a second. And in that fraction of a second, they changed from being at rest to being in a state of motion to the left or to the right for the other guy. Now, final velocity states. Let's get this squared away. All right. This is V subscript F. They both started with zero. Uh, Carl's V subscript I, his initial, or excuse me, V subscript F, his final speed, final velocity, I guess we should say it, is six meters per second, 6.00 meters per second. That's to the right. So that would be over in this direction. No, wait a minute. <laughs> what the? F <laughs> this way would be rightward. Sometimes those things, they, they pop at the funniest times. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so... Okay, so here's Carl, six meters per second this way, to the right. And then Bob is negative three meters per second. So his speedometer reads three meters per second. His direction is left. So if we write it down as a velocity, we would write it down as negative 3.00 meters per second. And you might ask yourself, well, why is it that there... Velocity states are different. They're final. I mean, they started out at rest, but they didn't finish that way uh, in this example. Same thing with Sava and Sam. They, both times we tried it, they didn't finish the same. Let's take a look at a diagram. Okay, this is a Dr. B stick diagram of two guys, Carl and Bob. Uh, they look both the same size, but they're supposed to be uh, one of them is supposed to be smaller. Uh, so here's a diag. Here they are in contact. 
That's about that's as close as I could get to doing patty cake, you know, with stick figures. I'm not really another Leonardo da Vinci, but this I can do. Okay, the force from Carl on Bob is negative 500 newtons. The force from Car from Bob on Carl is positive 500 newtons. So go ahead and sketch that. Those are your forces, and then. And according to Sir Isaac Newton's third law, those are your th that is your third law pair. Equal but opposite reaction. All right? And so if Bob pushes on Carl with 500 newtons, Carl's going to push back with 500 newtons uh, directed to the, to the left. Now, over the time of their... Now, I've got a cool animation here, so take a look at this screen here. Um, in the course of 0 0.48 seconds, they move. Yay! All right. So uh, that was that was thrilling. <laughs> so the, in the course of delta t equals 0.48, their distance. I calculated their distances, and this is actual, uh, actually. You know, so this is like one half at squared for that acceleration and t uh, of 0 0.48 seconds, uh, and then proportional to the to the actual screen. Uh, so those distances are righteous. Here are the velocity vectors: v final for Bob, v final for Carl. And so again, I I wish to. Um, challenge you with this idea that the forces are the same size but the final velocity states are not. The contact times are the same. But positions are not symmetric either. You know, so at the end of 0.48 seconds they've traveled a certain distance uh, from zero and th that's not symmetric either. And so, um, when you're thinking about all this, um, there's some things that are equal or symmetric left to right, and other things that don't really, you know, work out to be equal numbers. You know, their velocity states, positions, and so forth. So, if their interactions are equal and Newton's third law is valid, then why aren't their final velocity states equal? Go ahead and write down that question. And my wonderful students, that is actually a very good study question. I cannot tell you, and I will not tell you, what is going to be on the test, question-wise. I can tell you a lot, the, the, the vast majority of the answers. And if you want to take a note of that, Right now, I'll read off the answers for you. A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, so, but questions, you're going to have to figure out which letter goes with which question. But this one, uh, if you keep this in mind tomorrow, or Thursday, I should say, uh, and as you prepare yourself, uh, for the test, uh, then you'll be like this food product. I can't believe it's not butter, except for you guys it'll be, I can't believe I aced Dr. B's test. All right, so, because remember, when you're, if you want to ace my test, it's not impossible to get a good grade. But to ace it, you got to really be on your, on your toes. you got to really be able to think on your feet. And that's what I want you to do. Now, this symmetry question, we'll take it all the way home next Tuesday when we start instruction again. So this is the last day of instruction before exam one. Exam one will be Thursday, and then next Tuesday, a week from today, We'll start up with chapter four, momentum and symmetry and stuff like that. Now, I want to um, focus, here are the five blocks of information, or six blocks. 
Um, I want to focus on five, block five of these things together. Um, for instance, this one, I want you to, I don't know, draw a, a circle around it or a box or something. And I'm going to call this group CB for Carl and Bob. And then I want you to block off this one down here, item three. Let's call that I3, just for bookkeeping purposes, just for conversational purposes. You know, somebody says, yeah, you can call me Robert, or you can call me Bob, just don't call me late for dinner. You ever hear that? Okay, so that's what, yeah, it's a little joke. Uh, okay, let's, let's call this one A4, item number four about accelerations. Ding! And I gave this one a red dashed line, boxing it around. Okay, five delta, about delta V. A fuzzy blue line. And then the last block I want to focus on is 6F, the final velocity states. And then number seven down here, the question why. Um, we'll tackle that next Tuesday. But I have some questions now about these, these five blocks. And um, I want you to um, answer some clicker questions. And we're going to try to sharpen up your thinking and your reading, actually, and your decision-making skills. So let me... get... the first question. Okay, so, and I'm going to give you the blocks on this next question, so don't worry about that. Which of the five groups, frequency BB? By the way, I was sick as a dog over the weekend, so I hardly did any schoolwork. And so I still have an updated L6 data in your grade book. But I will do that. and L7. And a few of you all update L5. Which of the five groups shows the result of applying Newton's second law? Group CB, group I3, group A4, group 5 delta, Yeah, but you were supposed to do that. They're in numeric order, though. Carl and Bob, the red one is CB. I3 is below that. And then over the top. Thirty seconds to make your decision. And hey, you guys, you're going to have to take about a minute for this questions like this. If I, I mean, if I have a question like this on the exam, because I budget roughly one minute per question, one minute per point. Does the final exam is going to be like up there and we're doing it on our quickers, or is it like a paper? Everything, every exam, midterm and final, is going to be on paper, and you'll have a scantron. And you'll operate your clicker from so the paper. Can, okay, yeah. so we can't, we're not going at the same pace as anyone else. Right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. A little bit of disagreement here. Uh, some of you voted for C, uh, but a bunch of you voted for the other uh, categories, the other answers. Let's take a look at uh, which one it is. Uh, Newton's second law, that would be this one, accelerations, A4. And 
it, some of you got that wrong. If you got that wrong, even if you didn't get it right wrong, uh, make a note of this. It's because you're using A equals F net over M. That's Newton's second law in terms of the acceleration as the quotient of a net force and a mass. So yeah, that's, that's kosher. A4 for accelerations. I have another question for you. Uh, okay, let's try this one. Now this one's a little, this one's inside out. All right, now I'm going to give you the concept and which concept goes with group I3? There's I3. Okay, Alexis, I3, it's right there. I got the letter there for you and everything. But what concept goes with it? I hear a lot of people turning pages in their notebooks. Very good. That is what I want you to... Oh! I just patted the table. I'll have to pound this one over here when I want to emphasize. That's what I want you to do. And definitely talk to your neighbors and, and talk it out. It's like a little mini study session. Twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ching. Uh oh. We got some splaining to do. Another one where there's a spread of answers. One of them appears to be clear to the majority of you, but we had one last week that the majority answered incorrectly, and the smallest minority uh, had the answer. Had the, the correct answer was selected by the smallest of the minorities. So let's see what this one is. Newton's third law. And that is D. And that is what the majority of you voted for. But a significant portion of you voted for Newton's first law. Now, here's how you figure out. Here's the tip off uh, that it's the third law. Third law, equal but opposite reaction. That's your colloquial form of Newton's third law. And here's the tip off. Those two forces, they're equal size, but opposite directions. All right, so make a note of that. All right, that's your tip off. That's a tip off for uh, group I3. Now, I have another question for you. And this one I want you to really think carefully. And hey, you know, I, I mentioned, I believe I mentioned last week or the week before that, that our uh, formulas will come. The, you won't have a formula sheet, but you will have a formula matching section, the first five or six questions on the test, you know, six or seven. All right. And. This, these are what we're doing right now is actually very similar to that, except it's not, it's it's matching, but we're we're looking at sets of numeric uh, formulas, not or numeric data, uh, 
and not specifically at formulas. But it's very similar to what you'll do on the formula matching. So let's try another question. Here it is. Initial conditions. Initial conditions would be a good description of which of those blocks. And the blocks are lettered for your viewing convenience. Thirty seconds. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one, zero. All right, let's see what you guys got here. Oh, brother. Looks like we got a bunch of geniuses around here. 99% of you voted for this one. Uh, and here's another, and, and if... Two people didn't vote for that. For, but here's another way to think about that answer. Here's your CB block. And one thing you can say about it is that's your given information or your starting specs. I mean, you can, there's any kind of, uh, uh, you know, any number of different ways to describe that information. An egghead physicist like me would say, Initial conditions, but you know, anywhere else you might say, well, what, what, what's my given information? That'd be like a math class. And if you're, you know, just talking with somebody out on the street in front of uh, Panera Bread or something like that, starting specs. What are the starting specs for this uh, this deal? You might say that. So all kinds of different concepts. And I'm bringing that up to you because you may need to write uh, a word or a phrase on exam two using your clicker. As you have letters in there, we've done numbers. You can also do letters, A through Z, numbers, even punctuation. All right. And so forming these concepts and making distinctions and stuff is pretty important and it's part of the thinking task uh, that we have. Now um, I'm going to be asking you more questions about this half of the Bob and Carl, the forces half. The oh. I did at what time is it? Eleven nineteen. All right. We're prepared for that. Let me finish my concept. Is that what it was? All right, let's see if we can get this system turned back on. Man, this is the, this is becoming, this is the jinx classroom the last couple days. Yeah, see, of course, my laptop is just cooking along, no problem. Man portable system. Okay, 22 seconds to warm up. Um, hey, you guys, definitely be, if you can, if you can, like, get the Carl and Bob example, uh, the force is half of it, nailed to the wall, I mean, and riveted in place, 
um, then you're going to have most of your tool and understand everything about it and why the things are the way they are. You're going to have a good handle on the, on the skills that you need. But we've also got concepts, and every time I'm in lecture, we talk about different concepts. All right, let's see if we can get this display back. Dr. B. Yes. Dr. B strikes again. All right, let's go back to the... What's... I wonder if that's what happened last time. You know, something with this projector fluked up the whole system. All right, let's keep going. Um, our second topic today, and this is, this is um, going to require some sketching. So make sure you have a couple pages of notebook paper where you have plenty of room to roam. Uh, we're going to work on net force in two and three dimensions. And we're going to start with an example of Victor Oladipo defending Nate Robinson in this picture. If you have forces that are only left or right, or forces that are only up and down, then plus and minus signs are perfectly fine to encode direction. And if you do that, regular arithmetic will handle the directions and get you the size of the net force vector with perfect fidelity. It'll be perfectly accurate. It's, and so a one, that's a, that's a one-dimensional system. All left or right, all up or down. All toward or away from you. And you can think about it that. So if you're looking, for instance, if you're looking at a microscope, you know, in a microscope, you know, the microscope goes up or down relative to the slide. That's the only thing. That's the only factor that affects the focus and stuff. All right, so let's think about these two cats. Does that screen look dim? Because usually it really pops. All right, so here's Victor and Nate. Um, and let's say that the Victor Oladipo strength factor is 300 newtons. So he's going to exert a 300 newton um, force on a basketball. Here it is. And that Nate Robinson, wuss that he is, actually he's retired now. But he was forced into retirement by Victor Oladipo, I guess. And strength factor is only 200 newtons. All right, so two nice round numbers. I always make the Orlando Magic stronger. Even when it's LeBron James is the other guy. All right, so let's say that uh, Victor... Uh, pulls to the left and that Nate Robinson pulls that basketball to the right. So here are two arrows, the two black arrows there, uh, and they represent accurately uh, 200 and 300 Newton forces. That is to scale. All right, the tail of each is at the center of the basketball. All right. And so this is a classic left and right only system. So Victor Oladipo would get a minus 300 newtons for his force, um, the constituent force F subscript V. That would get a minus 300. And then the constituent force Nate Robinson, F subscript NR, that would get a positive 200. So your, your math would look a little bit like this. Okay, the net force... And notice that this is a, a vector statement. I have the little arrows over each capital F. The net force vector is equal to the sum of the two constituent forces. Victor Oladipo's force and Nate Robinson's force. Now, if you look at that, you'll see that... Oh, boy. If you guys feel like moving, go ahead and... And you can sit in one of the low back rows if you want. Um, 
in this first part where I have vector f subscript v and vector f subscript nr, I don't have a minus sign in there. That is implied in the vector arrow on top. That vector arrow means prepare yourself for, for either a plus or a minus. Okay, then you, go, then you say to yourself, okay, let me go to pluses and minuses. That's this statement, minus 300 newtons plus 200 newtons. Okay, so that's you plugging in your actual numbers and your directions. And now you do the math, math you do the arithmetic, um, and you get negative 100 newtons for your result. And that is accurate. The net force, because Victor Oladipo is 100 newtons stronger than Nate Robinson in this example. Okay, so, and we've done this uh, examples like this before, so uh, there's nothing great shakes about this. Now, in two or three dimensions, it's not so easy. You've got to do things a little bit more carefully. And that's because when you have a vector sum in three dimensions, they're not tail to tail the way that is. They don't draw out that way. They might not be in exactly opposite directions, Sam. Okay? And we're going to do an example of that in just a minute. So the net force vector is always what we call a sum of vectors. So a sum of vectors is not the same as a sum of scalars, a sum of regular old numbers. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6, but vector 1 plus vector 2 plus vector 3 uh, might not be, it might be, you know, it might not even be, it might be 0 if you have 3 vectors. So you, you have to um, do it out carefully. If you have two, um, two constituent vectors, they will form, and if they're not in the same direction, or if they're not in opposite directions, they'll form uh, two adjacent sides of a parallelogram. All right, and then the parallelogram, the diagonal of that boils down to a right triangle. And that's what I'm gonna show you now on graph paper. Okay, so we're going to do this, two, we're going to do a two-dimensional example, and there's no such thing as uh, three-dimensional graph paper. Unfortunately, uh, I wish there was. Actually, computers serve the same purpose. Uh, but we're going to do a two-dimensional example here of a vector sum for Victor and Nate Robinson again. Okay, now I have my blue graph paper Boy, that looks pretty washed out. I'm glad we're going to get through this class without, without the uh, system breaking down again. Okay, so go ahead and put a X or a plus sign. Here's my X marks the spot. I'm going to put my basketball there. Okay, and Victor and Nate are going to battle over the basketball. But it's not going to be left and right. It's going to be two different directions. All right, so here's my basketball. Whoa, that is hard to see. Uh, it's hard to see the plus sign. Let me shrink that basketball down and put a black dot here. Okay, so there's the location of my basketball. So we'll abstract out the picture of the basketball and just put a dot where its center of mass is. Okay, so there's my basketball, and those two cats are fighting over this basketball. All right, now let's say that Victor is pulling up in this direction. All right, so here's um, another pull from Victor Oladipo. All right, and let's say that his, um, his basketball enemy, Nate Robinson, is, oh man, this is supposed to be red. Can you guys see the, any red in that? Yeah. I can barely, at least from my, my angle, it's, it's easy to see. Uh, anyway, so here's Nate Robinson, and that's an example of two constituent forces. They're not back-to-back. -back. They're not in the same direction. 
They're just in two skewed directions. And neither of them are horizontal. And neither of them are vertical. All right? Now, if you do have one horizontal, one vertical, you've got a, an easy problem. But even if they're not, you know, if you're on graph paper, so here's my, you know, this is a hypotenuse of a right triangle here, if you will. Same thing here. All right? Now, to figure out the parallelogram, here's what you do. First of all, you put a dot over here at the tip of Victor Oladipo's force. And then, now you're going to have to do this by eye. I took a long time this morning doing it very precisely, pixel by pixel, on my computer. But you do your best. Eyeball in a copy of Nate Robinson's force starting from the tip of Victor's force copied over here so that this dotted red arrow, a little bit smaller, is a copy of Nate Robinson's arrow down here, the original Nate Robinson arrow. Now, can you see the parallelogram shaping up? Okay, we've got three sides of it. And basically, all you have to do is connect the dots. We, you know, the, we've got the fourth side. Now, what is the fourth side? Well, you go to the tip of Nate Robinson's initial diagram, you know. You always start with the two forces tail to tail. That you always do. And if they're skewed like this, if they're not back to back, if they're not the same direction, this is what you do. You put a dot over here, all right. Now, this is a dot at the tip of Nate Robinson's force. And now I copy Victor Oladipo's force. Da, 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 da. Here it is. All right. And this black dashed line is a copy of this baby. All right. And really, that's your um, parallelogram. And it's kind of launched up some angle. I didn't really figure out what the angle is, but you can, if you do a little trig, you can figure it out. But you can all do this on a, on a piece of graph paper. Ooh, I wish I could do that on a test. There's no way to do, or is there? I wonder. Dr. B, my brain is clicking. How can I get students to think about this on the test and be able to answer it? I can get you all to think about it, but rendering an answer with a clicker or a scantron and not Christmas tree or scan. I mean, we could do it, you know, use five dots of the scantron to draw in the, the vector. I guess, but anyway, so those two arrows, if they're accurately drawn, if you've eyeballed them in good, they'll meet at the same point. This red copy of Nate will meet at the same point as this black copy of Victor. All right, and that point dun, 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 is right there, right up here at the tippy top of this kind of slanted parallelogram, right? Now the diagonal, you can sketch that in now. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. And that blue fuzzy arrow is the net force arrow, right? Now I'm going to uh, move a copy of the blue uh, arrow, the blue fuzzy arrow, over to the right. All right. So go ahead and make a copy of it over there. You know, just do your best. You know, kind of eyeballing a good copy. And I said that it it boils down to a right triangle. Yes, that is correct. All right. And here's the right triangle. This is the hypotenuse. This net force vector, 
you can always figure out the length of it, you know, how many newtons, by counting squares and then figuring out the right triangle. There's the right triangle right there. So this is how you get to figure out the direction and the size of a net force, even if they're not, you know, left and right, even if they're not one up and one sideways, you know, if they're at some, any weird angle, you can still do it. And it, it boils down to right triangle. Now, if you want to figure out the exact tilt angle of this net force arrow, you got to do some trig. And we're not allowed to do trig in this class, so I'm, I'm going to tell you how to describe this direction. The direction is roughly northeast. And if you count the blocks, you can figure out the size of the hypotenuse. Easy as that. All right? So Pythagorean theorem, you may have to do that on the exam. Uh, the tilt angle, it's good enough to say northeast or southwest or whatever approximate angle, or east, you know, whatever approximate angle it is, you know. Unless it comes in at like 45, then you know it's exactly northeast or exactly southeast or something like that. Now let me pause for questions before we continue. Darian, can you come and sign out? Yeah, question. I would have to tell you how, how many newtons for each block of graph paper. Yeah, which I didn't on this one. You know, I because I all I wanted to do is show you how the sketching works. Not because everybody knows how to do, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's the, you know. But the but, but getting to that right triangle, you know, starting with uh, Nate Robinson and Victor Oladipo forces here and getting to that yellow right triangle. You know, that's the, you know, for you guys, that's the new task, the sketching task. So I'm going to have to think about how to do a, a question uh, that interrogates that skill on the test. Uh, don't be surprised if you see something like this, some question related to this on the test. Uh, so where are we? Uh Let's talk about where we are and what I will be looking at in the next 48 hours. Just like this kitty cat. Can you believe a dog letting a cat do that? That is like, that is so, actually that's very accurate. Dogs are pretty lazy most of the time. And cats are pretty sneaky most of the time. Anyway, first law, how did Gal Galileo develop it? How does free fall figure into it? Um, second law. Second law, that's about accelerations and forces. We just worked through uh, how to figure out a net force. You know, the, the approximate direction and an exact sketch if you have graph paper and uh, the size of the net force. And because in the second law, the second law is, is about a net force. It's net force equals ma. Acceleration is equal to net force divided by mass, m. Third law. Ah, think about the skateboarders interacting. Carl and Bob. Matter of fact, Carl and Bob in... in force us to invoke or to use and think about all three of the laws of motion. So that's a nice example to think about. Now, uh, what technology have we been using? Well, positions, distances, and time. Intervals, time intervals and distances. Um... We've talked about velocity, the difference between speed and velocity, how to distinguish between those two concepts. They're related, but they're not the same. Delta V, another delta V concept, acceleration. 
What's the relationship between acceleration and delta V? Okay, we've been talking about that. We've uh, talked about free fall calculations. 9.8 meters per second of downward speed for every second of downward free fall. And I believe I mentioned that if you're on the way up, like a baseball, you lose 9.8 meters per second of upward speed for every second on the way up. And that's considered free fall as well. So there's simple and deluxe versions. The deluxe version is a ballistic trajectory of a baseball that arcs up as a parabola and comes back down to the earth. A simple one is Peregrine took dropping a stone down the well in the mines of Moria. Now, side note, uniform circular motion, it's actually in chapter three, but we're going to um, tackle that after exam one. So you can read it and skim it if you want, but we're not going to have any questions about uniform circular motion uh, until after exam one. So. Starting next Tuesday, we'll probably tackle that. Some, some uh, organizing notes for the exam. And I want to really emphasize your study guide it is your lecture notes. Um, so don't ask... Do not ask me for a doc, uh, do not ask me, Dr. B, do we have a study guide for this test? And the answer for that is always no. Secondary to your lecture notes are homework and eye clicker questions. And an example of that, 2B, item 2B, eye clicker questions, uh, are the eye clicker questions that we had today? I might just, I, I could have asked you another three or four of those. And I probably will ask you another two or three on exam one. So if you want to get ready for the, the ones that you see on exam one, make sure you ultra, ultra, ultra know what we did today. Third level of importance reading in the textbook that supports the lecture which is almost everything uh, in lectures supported by the textbook. So be here at 10.30 a.m. sharp, if not sooner, and we will be ready. Uh, Raspberry UCF Scantron, pencil and eraser, calculator is permitted, cell phones are not, and we'll be Organizing a firing squad for people that use a s cell phone on the test. Actually, that's not a, I shouldn't joke. We'll be organizing expulsion. I'm not done, fellas. And the time is not over. It's, I still have five minutes. All right. Uh, and if you want to, if you have a graphing calculator, you know, a big fancy one, you can use that. But all you really need is something like this one over here. This baby. Um, I clicker too. Make sure you bring that. Make sure you have good batteries, everything. I want you to ex include some study with at least one other human being. All right? If you can, if you haven't made friends with anybody in this class, uh, now would be a good time. And for the next 48 hours. And so just, you know, if you're really shy, just would you be my friend for 48 hours? <laughs> and maybe it'll blossom. And the one thing that... The one thing that I emphasize most of all on exams, and I'll, on exam day, I'll, you'll, it'll just be like nagging. You'll, I'll sound like your mother-in-law. I want you to read every question very carefully. OK? 
Okay. And just do that, and you'll avoid getting tripped up. Instead of trying to sk skate out of class early, see, by not reading carefully and trying to escape early, I'm not, I'm not pointing at you. I'm not pointing at anybody. You know, you guys are okay. I, I know what you're doing. You're not in trouble. But if you try to do that on a question, you know, these guys, they tried to bolt out of here. And I said, well, I'm not done yet. And the question is going to say the same thing to you, too. You're going to say, oh, God, I know this question. And you're not going to read the whole question. And you'll go down and circle the wrong answer. Don't do that. Read it all the way through and read it carefully and think. And then, my wonderful students, you shall prosper. Okay, homework. Uh, prepare yourself for exam one. I'll see you on Thursday. You're dismissed. Did you say we can bring, because I only have graphing calculators from high school. Am I allowed to use it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, it's like total overkill, but yeah. I know, it's just the only one I have the awesome. Yeah. Hey. Um, I, uh, I just got my eye clicker. I ordered it from a very off-brand supplier, so it came really late. Um, but yeah. I answered the first question.